you are here with Lori and Melanie this morning on our podcast, Fill the Fire. And this morning we had an opportunity to interview someone named Chad Daybell, who's had many experiences with the Savior of this world. Because of our love for Jesus Christ, we wanted other people to know how much he is an invitation to come unto him, how much he wants us to become part of his life, because he's already there. He's just waiting for us. And so we want to talk to Chad about his personal experiences with the Savior, where he's had many experiences because of his near-death experiences, and I'm sure more personal ones as well, that he has seen our Savior, and he wants us to know that Jesus wants us to come unto him and to come to know him. So we're here with Chad Daybell, and he is on our Feel the Fire podcast today, and we really want to talk to Chad about his experiences with Jesus. And we know that you've had some pretty amazing experiences, and that's what we're here to do, is to testify of Jesus and who he is and who he is to us. So, Chad, hi. Hello. Glad to be on the podcast with you. Thank you. We're excited to have you and happy that you could come on with us today. Why don't you start with like your first experience is with Jesus and kind of who he is to you. Okay. I grew up in a Christian home, but honestly, other than Sunday, we didn't really talk about Jesus at all. My parents grew up in the 60s, and they were doing a good job as parents, but religion always kind of took a back seat to everything else. But when I was 18 years old, I decided to serve a mission for my church. And as part of that, we went to a training center. And my first real experience with Jesus was about two weeks into that training, Mm -hmm. where one of the other missionaries read a poem about how Jesus came to earth to sacrifice for us so that we could someday return and live with him. And it made me feel closer to Jesus than I ever had. It, it made him feel like a, a real person to me. He wasn't just a painting on the wall or, or somebody that we said at the name, his name at the end of a prayer. And so I just started bawling and the rest of the missionaries thought I'd lost my mind or something, but <laughs> I could not stop crying. Mm. And the burning in my chest was so strong that I finally could feel a connection to Jesus that I'd never felt before. And he felt like a friend to me. And so as I went out into the mission field, I carried that with me, even during the hard times. And there were times where it felt like The Savior was standing right there with us as we talked to people. And I had an experience soon after I arrived. I served in New Jersey, Spanish-speaking, and there's a lot of ghetto situations, a lot of violence around me. And I got a little depressed, and I felt I just needed to pray and get a confirmation that I was really doing the right thing, giving up college for a couple of years. And so I went into our bathroom and said a prayer. And I did see, I believe absolutely, that I saw a vision of Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father as they appear. Um, They looked a little different than the paintings Hmm. that we see. But I knew it was them, and they were comforting me and gave me encouragement to move forward. Um... Wow. As we talked about on our other podcast that I did with you and Jason Mao, I talked about a near-death experience I had in which I was about 23 years old, and I was down in San Diego, California, and I went out on a rocky ledge and was hit by a huge wave that knocked me down, and it actually knocked me out of my body. And I found myself standing, talking to my grandpa, who had died many years before. And what he did was show me some scenes of future events. And I've never really said it publicly, I guess, but part of those scenes showed me talking in the future with 
the Savior and also my children, talking with him and that he's the real living being, that he will come again. And I hope we can live the way we should, that those visions I was shown can happen. Hmm. So, in, what in do you remember like, your feelings being like with him? Like being shown that, like you were like his friend, you were like talking with him, you were working with him? Yeah, it was, uh, it wasn't a situation where we were like bowing down to him. Uh, he essentially treated us as friends. He's certainly still above us in every way, but we were serving him. And so he looked at us as helping him, helping spread the gospel through the world. Hmm. This, the visions I had show were after there was major tribulations in the world. And so it was a time of rejuvenation. We talk about a new Jerusalem. Hmm. That's the era I saw. And that much of the world was in chaos and still in war and trial. But I was shown that Jesus will come even ahead of time, before his second coming, and help establish his people. And that's what I was shown, is that my family will be able to help him, and he'll be appreciative of us as we raise our families in righteousness. And He was glorious, um, just as I've said before, the paintings don't really demonstrate the full power he has and the feelings you have when you're next to him. Mm -hmm. uh, just a uh, radiant light comes off of him, and yet he you can see his face clearly. It's not like he's obscured by uh, glorious light, but he just radiates happiness. There's a, a joy in his eyes that you rarely see in anyone else on this earth. And a smile and a laugh that <laughs> kind of erupts kind of from his chest, you know. It's not just a giggle or anything. It's, <laughs> it's a full-hearted laugh, and he, it's a happy, happy laugh. And I just, he felt like a, a brother, but also we recognize that he is a heavenly being. But he was organizing us to build this city and to help the rest of the world come to understand the happiness that could be theirs. Did it give you a sense of peace as you saw those upcoming events, as he worked with you and others? Did it give you a totally different sense? Because most of those ideas might be a little troubling to see and witness. Uh, yeah, it was a feeling of peace for, for sure. Everyone had been through some really tough times. Just getting to that city required great sacrifice by people. There was, you know, the economy had crashed. The war had come to America. And so we were just, I guess you'd call a remnant, a, a surviving group that had made their way to that area. And we were able to meet other, I mean, it wasn't just Jesus all by himself. There was other heavenly beings that were there to guide us and help us. And so that was a great peace. Mm -hmm. We go through this life right now, and we don't hear of heavenly beings or any heavenly help, really. That's true. But it was such a relief to see the orchestration, the organization. Jesus is the head of this organization, but he has so many helpers, and um, the Bible talks about the resurrection, and a lot of these people that have, were resurrected at the time of Jesus Christ were there to help him, some of his disciples, and, and women, may, honestly, there were a lot more women than men that were there serving and just helping the mortals to mm -hmm. accomplish their tasks. But yes, that you titled your podcast, Fill the Fire, and that's exactly how it feels. Mm -hmm. It's a happy, holy feeling that can fill your whole body. 
Well, that's what we talk about is that it's a heavenly fire. Like it's not a mm-hmm. fire like we have fire and big campfire. It's not like a bonfire. It's a, heaven, right. it's a heavenly <laughs> fire. And mm-hmm. Mine usually it's comes so like from my chest area and just kind of exudes out from that area. Mm-hmm. Just like a burning, like a powerful feeling. But you felt that in his presence, but did you also feel like, what are like some of his personality traits? Because I'm interested in like, obviously he was powerful, but like, a calm power or what do you what are your ideas of his personality traits um, kindness there wasn't a sense of judgment at all he was mm. happy for the progress we'd made in our lives he was always so kind there were a couple of scenes I could see where my grandchildren went up to him a little bit timidly (laughs) but he just bent down on one knee and and held his arms out and they went right to him and he just held them tight and smiled up at us as we watched him give them a hug and almost like uh yeah like a heat almost a radiant Mm. feeling coming off of him all the time and so just complete acceptance for who we are, wanting us to strive and do better, but I don't know why. He kind of singled me out a couple times <laughs> and as if we knew each other pretty well. Mm. And he would joke a little bit with me. Uh, nothing was too serious. He said not to take things too seriously and just to move forward and, and not be too hard on ourselves. And I think that's a key principle that we need to remember. And I, I could feel that the atonement of Christ, the forgiveness, the repentance, and all of that, we'd already been taught that, and in many ways we'd already been through the process, and so we felt like we were living the way we should, and so we were accepted by him, but I also sensed that he feels that way about everybody, no matter what stage in life they are, whether they're going through deep trials, maybe they've committed great sins, but he still reaches out, just like he did with those grandkids I looked at. I saw him hug. He's reaching out to everyone. During my teenage years, when my family wasn't really that religious, I in our church, there was a painting of Jesus, and he looked almost, you know, a little frightening, kind of a probably 1600s painting of Jesus yeah. that they had on the wall. And so I'd look at that painting, and he did not seem friendly at all. Mm-hmm. And I just was a little bit afraid of him. I didn't, that might be part of why I didn't feel a connection to him or didn't even seek one out, really, as a mm. teenager, because he seemed so distant. But now, with a greater perspective and having seen some of these visions, I can tell that that's the last thing he is. He's very close to Mm -hmm. us. He's right there if we'll reach out Mm. for him, even in our daily lives now. We don't have to wait until the future to to fill him in our lives and to have heavenly help in our lives every day. What would you say, Chad, to um, our listeners that are desiring for more experiences be it, you know, the baptism of fire experience. Um, and, and what do you think maybe even Jesus would say to for them to have hope that that can happen for them? Because most people, like you said, do not feel worthy or they're hard on themselves or they, they have this unbelief. And I, maybe you can describe more of a way to believe in him um, just from your experiences with him that would help other people have hope that that can happen for them. Okay. I would say that that experience I had as a missionary was my baptism of fire where I felt encompassed in the Savior's love. And it had been a process. I'd read the scriptures and gotten to know the Savior finally. It does take a little bit of effort on our part. And then as we open our heart to Jesus, then he can fill us with that 
what I call the Holy Ghost, you know, uh, just a feeling of fire, uh, burning, but it is, it is a real experience that actually changes you mm. inside and out. And so a lot of people have those experiences and don't recognize them. They expect to be angels or something, but that burning of the bosom uh, is, is the first step and people often don't feel worthy to receive that but it's not a matter of worthiness necessarily you need to just have that desire to accept the savior mm -hmm. and that will be the first step to a stronger relationship with him and to be able to get to know him better I, like I said, I didn't hardly know him at all when I had that experience, but it opened the door that I could move forward, and I want people to know that anybody can go through that same experience. Uh, I was just a kid from a small town who just played sports his whole life. He, mm -hmm. I hadn't really paid the price for that wonderful experience, but it was granted to me, and everyone has that opportunity if they'll just reach out. It, does require putting away a lot of worldly things and to focus and study a bit on in the Bible and just get to know the Savior himself and then those experiences will occur. I love that. Can you also describe for us like what he looks like? I always want to hear it. What sure. he looked like um, to you. Okay. Every time I've seen him, it's been in a glorified form. I haven't really had a vision of him when he, at least a clear vision of what he looked like when he was on the earth. I, but, so what I've always seen is a future version, I suppose, or his current version is a resurrected being, but he, he has blonde hair. I'm not blonde. I got him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, at least. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, Maybe lighter than expected. <laughs> well, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so my visions of Jesus are fairly clear, especially the visions I had of him in the future. He did have longer hair. It was when I saw it almost to his shoulders. It wasn't a buzz cut or anything. Mm -hmm. And I'd say he had <laughs> blue eyes definitely radiant but they were so powerful and piercing that you know they were almost crystal clear in some cases it seems that blue seemed to be the standard color mm -hmm. uh, a little olive skin i think we sometimes think resurrected beings are just white all all over <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah he definitely had color in his eyes and his hair was brownish it wasn't dark brown kind of a light brown and the version i saw he didn't have much of a beard i i know that he can change he's just like a mortal he can probably change his hairstyle and decide <laughs> to grow a beard <laughs> it's all up to him but in that form he he didn't have much of a beard he was fairly clean shaven and mm -hmm. I know that's not usually how people picture him, but um, he was wearing a, a robe. It was kind of a tan robe. And what, every time I'd seen him, he'd kind of be out among the people, and that just seemed to be what he preferred to wear. And almost casual, I guess you'd say. It wasn't really formal clothing, hmm. but a robe. And then you know, I remember his hands. They did have the marks from the cross still there as a symbol of, of his sacrifice for us. And one scene I was shown, he, he did hold out his hands for my grandkids to actually touch hmm. the marks in his hands. And he, he would just smile. He wanted them to remember that 
and that he had paid the price for their sins hmm. and that they could live with him for eternity. I felt that he was encouraging us to to just be like him, that you didn't have to be on a huge pedestal to reach him or anything. That he was right there among us. He is the savior of the world and is a perfect man, but he doesn't want us to feel lower than him. And he serves and wants to be the servant of all. I love that. Can you, you said that he was like joking with you. Is that like more like telepathy speaking, like spirit to spirit? Or was that more like, like talking to you and like joking, like friend to friend? Mm, but <laughs> in the future scene that I described there with the grandkids, it was verbal. Mm. I mean, he just, he did stand up after hugging the kids and and just made some funny little comments, you know, humorous, mm -hmm. not like telling jokes, but just uh, <laughs> a dry humor, I suppose you'd say. <laughs> he can see the the light, the lighter side of life. Um, I, it seems like he was commenting about one of my granddaughters who seemed really shy, and he, he just kind of whispered to me something like she's sure a cute girl and doesn't need to be that shy or something like that. <laughs> so she did feel his love and warmed right up to him. Obviously, everyone did. <laughs> this all occurred on a plaza by a temple, by a holy building. And it seems like we knew he would be there and we gathered there that day and he came out of the building and and greeted us and seemed to know us very well and so that was that made it a lot you know, easier to to just chat with him but I don't know why I was shown that particular one other than it did show his kindness and love towards everybody everybody was eventually able to at least embrace him or shake his hand he It'd usually just kind of do a kind of a bro hug with the man. <laughs> you know, just do that. Dude to dude. Hey, man. Yeah. That's funny. Because he's a real person. Like he lived a real life and like we do and he's a real person and He relates to us. Mm -hmm. More yeah, than we think he does. Because we think of him as a heavenly being and not like us. Mm -hmm. Right, untouchable, kinda un you know, no humor at all. Very serious is what we portray him sometimes, and that right. is just not accurate. And I think what we need to remember is we're here on Earth to become like him, and hmm. he's setting the example that we can be ourselves and and laugh and, mm -hmm. and enjoy life. And sometimes the Puritan way of life, where it's all serious and and no humor at all. It's not the way that Heavenly Father and Jesus are. Mm -hmm. There's laughter in heaven all the time. They're <laughs> very happy there. Mm -hmm. They have joy, right? Joy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which they're inviting joy, us to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're, they do experience sadness when they see people make bad choices, but overall they're very happy and want us to succeed and become like them. And so... I believe as we advance to heaven that we'll be best off if we can have that kind of humor and that happiness in our lives as well and not be judgmental of others. That, that was one thing that really stood out to me was he just was not judgmental. There mm -hmm. was a love there that said, I accept you as you are. Just mm -hmm. do the best you can and don't judge yourselves too harshly. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one of the biggest well, things that I felt Chad was when I had my experience with feeling that love is I felt no judgment mm -hmm. it was awesome right. it's mm -hmm. really good news it that is. he feels like that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because he's a being of love why would mm -hmm. he spend time taking you down his, his whole goal is to uplift you and exalt you mm -hmm. 
So I love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I just know how eager he is for all of us to return to him. He does love us individually, as hard as that is to comprehend with the millions of people on earth. But he knows each of our names. He he'll communicate with us now if we'll let him. Um, there isn't a, a block between us other than what we create ourselves. And we just need to seek out this Jesus, as they say, mm-hmm. and let him become a part of our life. And then he'll be there. There's the analogy that the Savior never moves. It's whether we move far from him or mm-hmm. if we move closer to him. And we just need to move closer to him in our daily lives and step by step and we'll find ourselves right there with him whether it's in this life or once we pass over if we've lived a good life he'll be right there to greet us Hmm. and we'll know him and when you take part in in the atonement that he offers us then Mm -hmm. you have part in him and you know you'll know him exactly I love that but mm-hmm. to be clear, his eyes are crystal blue. Is that correct? Is that what you're talking about? That, yeah, crystal blue is the <laughs> best description, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the people want to yeah. hear. They want to know. Yeah. It's a big debate at my house <laughs> because oh. of all the different <laughs> portraits. <laughs> it's a big debate at my house. And they may not have been blue when he was on the earth. Is that what you're saying? This is in his resurrected right. state. Right. Yeah, his, I was seeing him <laughs> in his resurrected state and... That's what I saw. <laughs> yep. That's amazing. And that he is our friend. And that he is like ahead of us in eternity. Mm-hmm. But go- had mm-hmm. gone through all the things that we're going through now. So he perfectly understands how hard this life is. The mortal life. And that's why we wanted yes. to have you. Uh, sorry. That's why we wanted to have you on, Chad. Is because we want people to know that the Savior is reaching out and wanting others to come unto him and let him change them. And so grateful for your testimony and Lori's testimony and my testimony and that he changes our lives and can bring us joy if we will only but let him and believe in him. Right. Well, he's often referred to as our older brother, and I'm the oldest brother of five, and I can relate to that feeling. (laughs) <laughs> where you do want to just help your siblings out. You don't want them to make mistakes. You do your best to help them when you can. And that's the role he's playing with us. He did atone for our sins and is our Savior, but now that older brother is just reaching out to us and, and loves us so much that we can't even really comprehend how much he loves us and wants us to be with him in his heavenly home someday. Hmm. And I think that's exactly what Satan is trying to to do, is to convince us that he is not loving, he's not approachable, and he's playing um, that adversary there to keep us away from that love and light. And so we have a lot of false traditions and a lot of false ideas about this Jesus whom we seek. And so right. we are here to bear testimony that this Jesus is approachable and he's loving and he's kind and he wants all of us back. And we need to overcome those false traditions by sharing. Mm-hmm. The good news. He, because he is real. We want mm-hmm. people to know that he is real and a real person. Yes, I testify he's real. <laughs> he, he does appear to people, and he does want all Christians to succeed and, and follow what he taught. He learned from his father what to teach the, the world and and that is the plan that will help us return to live with our Heavenly Father and with Jesus. And there is really no other way. That is the way and the truth and the life. And that is going to help us find true happiness. Yes, thank you that so is much. Awesome. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for having me on. And that you concludes. You are doing a great job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. We want everybody to feel the fire, the heavenly fire, mm-hmm. that you can be encompassed in his love. That's right. And That's feel, wonderful. and we want to just share again, as we hope that all can feel the fire. And thank you for listening today. <laughs> <laughs>